Masters, Larry Lalone with Geodesic Aerolite Boats here. Uh, today we're going to cover making ribs, soaking ribs, and steaming and installing ribs on the boats. It'll probably be uh, a couple, three videos maybe. Um, well, the first thing I want to point out is that, uh, is that while we're going through this stuff, I am not an expert on wood. I'm not an expert on uh, woodworking, I'm not even an expert on boat building, but I've built a lot of these boats and uh, these are just some things that we've picked up in the process of building these boats. So on one of our earlier videos, we talked about using the, uh, the uh, table saw right there and the table saw jig to make rib stock and stringers and things like that. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, you might want to go back and take a look at it. And so now we're going to talk about you've cut, you've cut your rib stock and how do you turn that into ribs for the boat. Uh, first thing is, if you used an 8-foot piece of wood for your rib stock, don't cut it right down the middle at 48 and 48. Kind of offset a little bit, maybe 52 and 44. Uh, that way you'll have a little bit extra to work with on the longer ribs in the middle of the boat, and you won't waste as much wood on the uh, smaller ribs at the end. Uh, the next question I get a lot is, um, I want to make my ribs oversized. I want to make them bigger. Um, the ribs that you have... The design on your plans for your ribs are the right size for your boat. They, uh, they are designed to work in conjunction with the Kevlar, the stringers, and the Dacron to make a four-piece hull that's going to be very strong and work very well for you. Um, you can make them a little bigger if you'd like. My advice would be if you're going to make the ribs bigger, make them wider. Don't make them thicker. They'll just be much harder to bend. The thicker you make them, the harder they are to bend. If you want to make them a little bigger, make them wider but no thicker. My other advice would be, if you want to make uh, the rib structure of the boat stronger, is just to add ribs. If your plans call for the ribs to be at six inches, then put them at five inches. Put in some extra ribs. You're not going to hurt anything. It's going to actually help the stringers because the distance between the ribs is going to be less, which means the stringer is going to be proportionately stronger by doing that. You're also going to be adding some Kevlar back and forth between the ribs. There will be more strands of Kevlar, which will also help the uh, the hull be a little bit stronger. So once you've got your ribs cut, uh, the next step, which I don't know if you have to do this, uh, I found that it works very well, is to take a small plane, this is just a little Stanley plane that I've used on every boat I've ever built, it works really well, and just sort of chamfer the edges. Just go down through and chamfer the edges of the rib stock like this, just take off a little bit so it doesn't have a sharp edge on it. Uh, again, I don't know if this is necessary, but I seem to have less breakage when I do this. And once you've chamfered the edges, take a piece of sandpaper, just knock it down real quick. Uh, it takes about two minutes to do a rib, so you are going to spend an hour or so doing it, but I think it's worth it. The next thing you want to look for is what I call, I think the proper term is grain runout. And hopefully we can get this on uh, video. If you look down here, your rib stock, if you select a good rib stock, it'll be mostly straight like this, but you're going to get to a point where it runs out like this, where it runs off the side. This is where your ribs are going to break if you're installing it. When you go to twist it like that, that's the most likely place for it to break. So when you're, when you're selecting your ribs to put in the boat, if you have grain run out like that, and we'll cover this when we're actually pulling them out of the steamer a little bit later, if you have grain run out, Try to plan that rib where that grain runout is not in a place where there's a severe bend. Okay, the next step to making the ribs and getting them ready to put in the boat is to soak the ribs. Now, I've built these little PVC uh, tubes uh, with caps on them. It works really well for, uh, for soaking the ribs. This one's for the long ribs. This one's for the short ribs. You don't have to do anything that fancy. I've also done it where I just wrapped them in a towel and soaked them on the deck and hosed them down and soaked them overnight. Uh, this is just because I usually have several sets of ribs going at the same time. It just helps me keep them straightened out. And soak the ribs at least overnight. Uh, if you're using green wood that's very freshly cut, you probably won't have to. But these, uh, these are soaking overnight. I've already drained the water out so we don't have a mess. And you can see they're just soaked and ready to go. This is red oak. And so... That's it for getting the ribs ready. Uh, now we're going to talk about steaming the ribs. 